My name is Jennifer Moffat. Um, I'm a social scientist. My topic is the story of Queensland's balloters, their social, economic and political contribution to the development of rural Queensland. A ballot was conducted when more than one person applied for the same portion of Crown agricultural land. And so it's interesting that um, less than a decade after Queensland separated from the colony of New South Wales, there was a need to, to have some process to address that. So ballots really reflect a demand for land. When they won a ballot was the right to rent agricultural land from the government. And there were certain conditions that applied to them retaining it. There was a residency condition. They had to actually live on the land. That was usually five to seven years. There were also conditions about fencing. They had to put a fence around the outside, two particular specifications. They also had to put in some form of watering for the stock. And they had to clear trees, either ring bark them or pull them with mechanised pulling. And if they didn't meet those conditions, they lost the land. However, once they had lived on that land for seven years and met those conditions for that period, they could actually sell it as though it was their own. My father won land in a ballot in 1956, and so I grew up on the land, and I saw um, what my parents did and what the other balloters did in our area, and really they created a community out of what was really virgin bush. A lot of them, uh, the balloters, became leaders in their local communities, lobbying Queensland education to get primary schools. They lobbied the government incessantly to get better roads. But they also set up social clubs. There was uh, cricket clubs, tennis clubs, pony clubs, bowls clubs. They built the buildings for the clubs. They built um, churches. So in the social dimension, they made a significant contribution. And certainly the increased production of cattle um, resulted in sale yards being built all over central Queensland. There, there was a, a small group of things in the collection that was particularly interesting and informative, and that is the legislation around land. The one key element was that while the government retained ownership of the land, the people who leased it from them actually developed it at their cost. So over time, the land increased in value because of this development, but at no cost to the government. So that's a very, a very clever strategy. The other key aspect was that in keeping the land, in leasing it rather than selling it, meant that continually land was coming back to the government as the leases came up for renewal. And what that meant is that they could subdivide and redistribute. And that meant they always had land available to, to, meet that, to meet that ongoing demand for land. I was initially focused on interviewing people who'd received land in ballots. In order to do that, I had to look at the most recent ballots. So I focused on the Fitzroy Basin Development Scheme, which is known as the Brigalow Scheme, and the Emerald Irrigation Scheme. But everywhere I went, people said, oh, are you going to, ask, are you going to cover this ballot or, or that ballot? And I'd never heard of them. So the scope of the project has changed. My sole goal is to tell the story about ballots. So it was always going to be a book, which is in progress. Since I've been doing the fellowship, um, more okay, ideas have come up about where to from here potentially. And I guess one of the important things really is that many of those people I interviewed um, are going to have their stories um, on the State Library website. So people will be able to listen to the audios and read the transcripts of the interviews. So I'm very happy that those stories will be there in perpetuity. Well, I think if someone's interested in the idea of applying for a scholarship, they should really read the guidelines very closely and also certainly look at what the State Library holdings are in their area. But there might be other resources that you could look up, other libraries. I mean, I found people 
who could help me. And I must say, with the state library librarians who suggested these people, I mean, I found the librarians to be enormously helpful. This was when I was looking at doing the fellowship and very knowledgeable. And it's not just the, you know, the many kilometres of physical resources that the library has, but it, it's the people. Um, it's a very diverse group um, and they're all very skilled, they're very knowledgeable and they're very willing to help you. So I, I think if you're thinking about applying, do it. Yeah. <laughs>